Hi guys, it's been a long time since the last chapter in this series. We had quite a busy summer. We had an amazing trip on Iceland and some other paramotor adventures. But now, as the day is getting shorter, we are back with this series. This is chapter 29 and I want to explain why a larger prop is better than a smaller one. In fact, we'll cover every aspect of propeller choice and design. There are a few parameters of every propeller that we need to take into consideration when we design a new prop. That is the diameter profile, cord, angle of attack and the amount of blades. All these five parameters have to be in sort of a balance. So uh, let's say an example, we already have a prop that works very well with a specific engine and you want to make it better, you cannot just change one thing. You cannot just, let's say, increase the diameter of the propeller and keep everything else the same because the prop will suddenly give more resistance uh, to the engine and the engine will not have enough power to reach the desired RPM. Same if you would increase the angle on the same uh, propeller and keep all the other parameter parameters the same the engine would not be able to reach that desired RPM. Let's start with the diameter. This is the main topic of this chapter. To any flying object, speed is the enemy number one, because with an increased speed, you get a way more drag. The drag increases rapidly. Now, the moving air is no different. This means if you try to move the air very fast on the, on the edges of the airflow, it will create vertices and drag. That means it is more efficient to try to move larger volume of air to a lower speed than a small volume to a high speed. What it means, if you take a large diameter propeller, you, you try to move a large mass a volume of air at a lower speed, while a smaller propeller only grabs this amount of air and to achieve the same thrust, you need to make the air moving faster, which is definitely inefficient. Let's have a look at some charts. For paramotors, 125 centimeter propeller is sort of a standard. Uh, now I take a comparison with the 132 centimeter propellers that we mostly use on Scout paramotors. This only means 6% increase in the diameter, but the area of the propeller increases by 12% because it's a square function. Now it gets a little more complicated because the tips of the propeller are useless just like tips on any wing so this is how it's gonna look let's assume roughly 10 centimeters on the tips are useless they only create uh, vortices you need to have them but they are not generating thrust in this case suddenly the difference between a larger prop and a smaller prop is 14 percent of the effective area this is not the end of the story because also the center part of the propeller is useless. The center part is where you have the bolts, the speed of rotation is very low, it's behind the engine in sort of a shade behind your pilot, doesn't get really good airflow. And the center part of the prop does not generate thrust. Probably it's even larger than on my drawings. Now and suddenly the difference of the effective green area between a 132 and 125 prop gets to 16% in, uh, although the diameter difference is only six. This doesn't technically mean that a larger prop is 16% more efficient, but it's getting sort of close to it. This means that the larger prop sort of grabs 16% more air, more air volume in every rotation. So it makes, uh, it causes a larger volume to move and is sufficient to make it move at a, at a lower speed.
So what size of prop you actually want? I would say the larger the better, take the largest that is possible. Obviously, if you already have a paramotor, this will limit your propeller uh, choices because you need to roughly maintain a seven centimeter gap on each side to have sort of uh, some safety margin. If you have an option to choose a larger cage, I would do so as long as your arms are long enough to reach wide and for a successful takeoff. <clears throat> now, a very important thing to consider is the reduction ratio because that determines how fast the propeller rotates. Now, let's assume these three examples. 125, 125 centimeter, which is per, sort of industry standard, 132, and an extreme value 150 centimeter propeller. This is an example on the Vitorazzi Moser Plus engine. Now with a reduction ratio of 2.68 and a maximum RPM on the engine 8,600, you get roughly 3,200 RPM on the propeller. So with a 125 centimeter prop, the tips will rotate at a speed of 0.62 speed of sound. With 132 it's already 0.65 and with a 150 it would be way over 0.7. A sort of a sweet spot for propellers is the 0.62 because if you increase the tip speed of the propeller beyond this threshold the sound will be unbearable. Uh, it will be just too noisy. Uh, this is probably why our 132 centimeter prop did not pass the sound test in uh, Germany. It was just a little more loud than the limit. And obviously for a 150 prop, you would definitely have to change the reduction ratio to keep the RPM on the prop low. So the next consideration is the choice of the profile. Different designers and manufacturers uh, choose a different profile. Here I have three examples of uh, propellers that we use the most for Vitorazzi engines. The first is the Helix prop, which is sort of a rather beefy profile. Second is the, is the Scout propeller that we use the 132 centimeter long uh, profile. It's somewhat similar to Helix, but still, uh, the thickness of the profile is lower. Last one is the E-Prop with a totally different profile, uh, very thin profile, and I want to explain in the next slide. It's not only about the thickness of the profile, but also the, the shape of the profile. These are just illustrations. This is not the actual profile of these propellers. I haven't cut them and measured, but based how, how it looks, I just made a quick, uh, quick uh, drawing. Now, obviously, you can see the beefiness of the Helix profile, the Scout somewhere in between, and EPROP came with a very interesting production technology that allowed them to have the profile really thin. Uh, there, the other difference is also the lower surface uh, of the propeller. With, on the Scout prop, it's sort of a straight line, and the EPROP, they were the first ones to introduce a very interesting profile to propellers. And you see the, the curve, the, the exaggerated curve on the camber line caused the lower profile to be actually curved inside, so it's not even a straight line, the lower surface. So, so these are three different ways how to achieve basically the same thing. The last consideration is the pitch of the propeller. Propeller pitch is the distance that a prop would travel forward in one revolution if it, if it would cut the air perfectly. It's given by the cord line, the length of the cord line and the angle of, uh, of the propeller. Currently we are designing a new prop for the Vitorazzi Monster engine and we already made a few decisions. That is, we uh, opted for the 132 diameter, which is the largest that can safely fit into the Scout frame. We have chosen a new profile that is somewhat inspired by the E-Prop and uh, <coughs> we have designed this beautiful blade uh, area. 
Now the last, last thing that we need to set is the angle of the probe, but you actually never know before. Whatever calculations and computer modeling you do, or you always need to do the final test. This is why we use an adjustable propeller. I can adjust the angle on, in sort of an infinite way. And so I've tested different angle settings to find the sweet spot for the propeller at which angle it works the best. If I increase the angle of the prop, the pitch increases and it will sort of create more load to the engine. So if the angle is too high, the engine will have not enough power to reach the desired RPM 8600. If the angle was too low, the prop would not put enough load onto the engine and the engine would rev up above 8600, which could cause the damage. So it's important to find the sweet spot to put the right amount of load onto the engine. The final step uh, once we know the desired angle is to create a fixed pitch propeller that is very convenient and easy to use for the end user. Now, how to know which prop is better? Um, as a general rule, I would say a larger prop is better uh, than a smaller prop and you would get more thrust and more efficiency from a larger prop. But you, still, if you take three equally sized propellers, how to determine which is better? Now, the most common is the static thrust test, that is putting a paramotor onto a test bench and uh, measure what's the static thrust. Honestly, well, you don't get absolute data. You only can compare data measured on the same day with the same engine, with same humidity and air pressure. And you can compare two propellers, which one is more efficient than other. If whatever data you measure, if it's measured on two different days, this data is not comparable. Yet there is a crucial question, is it any useful? Honestly, we don't do any static tests uh, of the propellers because I believe it's useless. There are better ways how to compare propellers and let's have a look at it. When I test propellers, I want to definitely compare the climb rate. The climb rate is pretty easy to measure. Take off on the same day, same glider, same weight, same pilot. Uh, let the brake toggles go so you don't interfere with the steering and you measure how many seconds it takes to climb 100 meters. That's the most accurate measurement of the dynamic thrust you get. You don't get the actual number of the thrust in kilograms, but you get uh, the climb rate so you can compare on the same day, same conditions, which propeller gives you more thrust. The second thing it's crucial is the cylinder head temperature after a 30 second climb. Uh, Vitorati Monster Plus is somewhat sensible to high temperatures. This is why most propellers have these cooling fins and it's really crucial to have good cooling on the engine. So the fourth characteristics you want to look at is the RPM needed for level flight well, because this will determine your fuel consumption on your cross-country flights. The lower, obviously, better. You want to check the cylinder head temperature on level flight as well, but this usually is not an issue. Regarding the climb rate, cooling at full power, uh, cruising RPM and cruising temperature. All these three propellers, that is the Helix, the Scout and the E-Prop, they perform pretty much the same and I haven't noticed any major differences. Yet there are some, for example, loudness. Loudness measured in decibels is the, plays quite an important role in Germany and Austria. Uh, where such measurement is part of the certification and the Scout Pro did not pass the certification because it was just slightly above the limit, probably due to the two centimeters that it is larger than the competitors and thus the tips, tip speed is slightly higher and the sound is slightly higher as well. One thing that I've noticed some kind of difference uh, was performance at high elevation when I was flying in the Icarus Trophy last year, we were we had some high altitude passes over over mountain ranges, and I've noticed, or I sort of had the feeling that probably the E prop has a slightly better performance at high elevation at low density. Uh, this is not something that I could measure 
I didn't have any, any proper tools for that, but it felt like the Scout probe was not that efficient as the EPROP in at high elevation. Acceleration, uh, it's obviously determined by the weight of the propeller. Uh, the more mass you need to accelerate, the more energy you need to apply and the longer it takes the prop to spin up from, let's say, the level RPM to the full, full, full RPM. In this respect, the EPROP is the lightest uh shortly followed by the scout prop and the helix uh, is the is the heaviest one this is not something you would be bothered if your flying style is mostly cruise cruise like cross-country flying you only uh, you only pay attention to this if your flying style is quite a lot of on and off power that is powered wing overs or slalom flying in this case you would you would benefit from a lighter prop Probably the last topic in the discussion about uh, propellers is are three or four blades propellers any better? Uh, I have tested a few three blade propellers and I came to a conclusion that I did not gain more thrust from the three blades. The vibration was low. Yeah, that was that was smooth. That was that was really nice. The sound was uh, great. <laughs> Sound of a three blade prop is different. To me, it seemed like it's louder, but when measured with decibels, it wasn't on this particular uh, Scout three blade prototype. Uh, it, uh, it felt like it's louder, but technically it wasn't, but the sound was different. The tone was different. I mean, it, it sounded like a MotoGP prop, which was really amazing. But there are some drawbacks as well. Three blades obviously cost more than two blades and uh, the three blades are heavier than the two blades. So if you really like going on and off throttle frequently, a two blade is definitely an option for you. There are, however, some applications where you can't avoid having uh, three or four blades. And that is if you, or if you fly uh, a really powerful engine, like a Polini 250. If you deliver a lot of power to the prop, you you need to uh, you need to make a lot of air moving now the best option is to get a larger prop but obviously your uh, arm spam or or your your arms reach is somewhat limiting so you have either option to use uh, wider blades with longer cord or use more blades or use higher angle of attack um, in this case for strong and powerful engines a three or four blade propeller would be a good option. Conclusions, uh, larger prop is definitely more efficient. Uh, this is proven by theory and it's pro proven by real life experience. Three blades are probably not more efficient, but they are definitely cool in sound and vibration and uh, three blades or four blades are a must for very powerful engines. So this was part 29 of the insights into paramotor geometry. The next topic is really cool. I'm going to discuss how much does the weight of the paramotor matter for your flying experience. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet and see you soon.